Hi, Anti Society. Welcome back to the Anti Social Planet. Today we are getting into new Bleach episode. I'm so excited. Okay, I got up this morning and was like immediately looking to see what the countdown was how long it was going to take Prince episode dropped. I was so excited and then I had to go and do stuff, which is ridiculous because all I wanted to do was watch this and now we're here. That being said, I'm a little bit not feeling great today. So if my energy levels a little bit more subdued than you're expecting. That's why I'm excited on the inside. It is not my fault that my body has decided to cause issues at this juncture. We're going to get into this because we ended in the middle of a fight with the previous season arc set of episodes so i gotta i have to know what happens we have like squad zero that we're going up against we have the two that are fighting in like the sky that's going on there's like different things with like the soul king coming up so many things are going on we just left and we basically didn't see much of ichigo last part i'm very excited to get into these episodes and see what we're about to jump into let's just get to the episode in three two one go Ooh, new opener right Just gonna turn it up, you know? Ooh. Interesting at the hand with the eye. Was that. <laughs> Yukitake? <laughs> right, we have some stuff going on with that too. Gosh, we really left in the middle of so many things going on. I don't even want to talk about Aizen. Like, the amount that I, I, he, like, when he showed up, I was like, no. Don't even, don't even hint at that. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, I love that it's, like, black and white with these pops of, like, color focus. Like, they did so much good color work in the previous parts. God, are we gonna get into, like, the Soul King and stuff? All the eyes are, like, freaking me out, too. Okay. Let's see, what are we getting into? Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah, I remember this. Intense music coming in, though. I mean, it is very interesting to have this, like, continued theme of sacrifice, right? Because we already had it with um, the other, like, uh, Quincy's that were, like, forced into being sacrifices, right? And then you have Squad Zero doing a very similar thing, but, like, voluntary? Dang! This is very intense. <laughs> like what loom that we're doing which i get given her like abilities the like weaving and tapestries and stuff but it's trippy she's also very scary yeah you should definitely be worried about that <laughs> Oh yeah, don't we have like some other people who are like MIA? About that. 
I'm glad that y'all are optimistic at this juncture, but um, I feel less so. Oh, well, we're going to see what the interaction is with the rest of them. Yeah, I was like, I feel like that's not going to work out with the reflection. That's so cool, though, that it's like... Because he attacked the reflection, it like reflected it back at him. Ooh. Yeah, I'd be worried about those ones. She really doesn't pull any punches, does she? Good luck. This is like the most subdued reaction to being found in like some weird dimension that is completely consumed by fire. I think it says a lot that that is the symbol that is like associated with his downfall. Okay, but I, I still kind of like him. So if you could, like, not kill him, that would be, like, kind of nice. But also... I need- he has to- I need answers before anything can happen to him. I love how they're woven into the tapestries as, like, silhouettes. His power is really cool too, but like also terrifying. We're getting quite a bit of recap, which I like I get because it's been a minute, but it does mean that I don't have a ton to commentate on because I already did. I mean, you didn't need to roast him like that. Yeah, there's a lot of anger in that phrase. Like, could have made him anything. And he was, like, a bug. An insect. But, like, looking down at him, too. Alright. Here we go. 
What do you got for me? Ooh. Still, though. The way that he's, like, basically a silhouette is so... <laughs> like, it's such a cool design, but, like... Ugh. Ooh, cool, like, switching of the art design there. Ooh, I didn't know we were getting on that. Okay, I was wondering what the title of this episode. It's so cool though that we have all the talk about like opening his eyes and then we have all the eye imagery in general, but like in the opener too. Dang, what is, why are we talking about so nice? I don't, look, look, Ishida. Sweetie Pie, I really like you. Not as much at the moment. But I don't think you stand a chance. Even though I know that you've probably been learning some new stuff. And you got some new ability things going on. But, um... I don't love your chances. The animation, though. Ooh, don't say things like that to him. Don't don't talk about like exterminating his his bloodline. That's like a sore spot. The like hollows, though, like the. Ooh. When was the last time we just dealt with a hollow? You know, run of the mill. Ooh. The way that he's literally like tied up by the tapestries. Oh, okay. I think, does that make it better? Would you like to explain with the class? Because I would like some kind of uh, answer. Why? That continued dig of, like, used to be. I don't know, I've got a feeling that there might be some kind of counter to this ability. Is this like a certain type of singing? Because it feels very like ceremonial. So I'm assuming that it's connected to some kind of specific like 
style or ceremony or something. Especially since his power is like connected to calligraphy, which I know like has its own like ceremonial, like deep history within Japanese culture. So Ooh. Dang, the art design really popping off on this episode. It always was, but like... Oh, okay. Why do we have so many skulls? What's that about? Why are we copying? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus Christ! What just happened? Is this power, like, leaking out? I was gonna say, he's not tied up anymore. How'd he reverse that, though? Dang, boy! You surprised me, but not in, like, a good way. And, uh... I'm a little bit worried and your power seems unstable kind of way. Interesting, too, that has those, like, two points of, like, light or his, you know, um, daishi or whatever. It was, like, almost like wings behind him. And we've had lots of, uh, like, angelic imagery associated with, like, the Quincy's and stuff. Whew. Yeah, remember when Ichigo and friends were like, hey, if they defeat you have for us, that's great, before we even get there. Didn't really work out that way. Ooh, cool shot, though. I don't know, there's quite a bit of distance still between you and, and, and there, but... Um, I don't doubt your abilities at this point. Sure. Ooh, that, like, circular shot? Come on. Why do I feel like they're flexing, like the animators?
Ooh, he looked way a bit younger in that one shot. I'm assuming that was like the last time he he went up against Soul Society. Ooh, having the bells line up with his footfalls is cool too. Ooh. That was a cool shot to go into the ending song. Okay. Whew. <laughs> kind of funky at the end, though. Enders are always a bit of a ride with <laughs> Bleach, though. What an episode, though. I mean, we had a bit of recap, which I get because it's been a minute since the episodes have been out. So they're like, hey, remember that this is what happened leading up to what we're doing right now because we're like picking up immediately after that. It's not like we had like a ending of an arc and then we're coming back afterwards. Um, oh, sorry. Just so <laughs> who did the ender? And I was like, I know them anyway. <laughs> uh, but then also kind of having like an immediate like shift in the power dynamic, right? Because I feel like the last part we had a lot of like soul society recovering from part one and kind of getting some of their footing back and struggling getting some of that power back on their side. And then now it seems like we're shifting again to Quincy's being in more of a position of power. Love that where we had the two of them on like the stairs not lining up. And then at the end, they're like back to back because I need Ichigo and Ishida to have like sit down and have like a real conversation. Are y'all just going to find the head? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Yes, power of a name. His actual name, though. There you go. Ooh, that would freak me out, too. <laughs> You're not gonna give Hime, like, a <laughs> warning? Before you bring the head back to life? Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, just because he had to borrow power that he probably doesn't have his strength back that he would even be able to put up as much of a fight as he could before. He didn't even win then. Oh. I like the little catch up with everybody. I don't like how, like, resigned Ichigo looked there, because I'm like, I want him to, like, I don't know, not be so somber. No. No. I don't know what the plan is, but the answer is no. No Aizen. Huh? What does that mean? What what does that mean? What am I supposed to do with that?
I mean, someone was, in fact, struck by a sword. What? I think that it's really interesting to have this focus on eyes and sight and stuff when it comes to the Yua and his abilities, because I think that leads into a lot of the stuff that's already been set up in the series of just like a focus on eyes, whether it's gate to the soul, right? Like you can see someone's soul through their eyes, or we've had eyes be brought up in multiple different things throughout like, the artwork and the designs of different creatures. And even in the Soul King himself, like his eyes are different, and that's part of what makes him seem otherworldly. And we've seen seen it with other characters throughout of like their eyes shifting depending on what their their power level is and having eyes be such a focal point I think is a really interesting thing for that. I think that him being like very much this I don't know counter to a lot of the other stuff that's going on. I think that there's very interesting parallels between the Quincy's and Soul Reapers and I've been saying that for a little bit every time that we learn something new about Quincy's now that there's more of them as opposed to just having Ishida that there are a lot of parallels between the those, and obviously there is like a direct connection between the two and having these two entities that have been at odds with each other for so long and yet are intertwined in so many different ways I think is very interesting and to have them going up against this person who is so ancient and so connected to Soul King and the origins of Soul Reapers, Soul Society, everything that is happening right now, I just think is like a very interesting concept the more we learn about him and like how long he's been around, how integrated into the origins he is. I think there are so many different, I don't know, angles to that, like how we got to this point of them basically trying to wipe each other out and what does that mean and can they? In a lot of ways having this difference in ideology and at the end of the day do they need also to have quincy's around to maintain that balance right like the whole point of why so many quincy's were wiped out by soul society is because they were messing up the balance with hollows and they're like we we need to maintain this balance so we have to eradicate them or get rid of them and i'm like okay but are they also part of the balance because i feel like they are especially with ichigo being like this focal point at the center of so many different abilities and i don't know factions that he kind of shares in all of it and because of that is he like the only one that's truly balanced because he's connected to all of it and i feel like balance is like a very important concept that has been lost along the way of this particular story like a, so much of the setup of soul reapers and soul society was talking about that balance and how do we maintain it and the importance of having that and then getting into this story arc with thousand year blood war is deviating so much from that idea and it's far more based on ideology and almost like this desperation of lashing out of just needing to survive or painting someone as an enemy and not really thinking any deeper into it like it's simplifying a lot of the conflict that is going on so i think that we're going to have to dig more into that and the actual like dynamics of that i don't know i just i, I feel like there's so many things that are being like set up in this episode and they just we got the recap and then they're like okay we're just going now things are happening and <laughs> not always prepared for it in the pacing of this one but i guess maybe we're getting some stuff with aizen now which i don't entirely know how i feel about because do we want to add another person who's mad at soul society and what it's doing with its existence do we want another person who wants to be in charge of everything don't know what's gonna happen now with the soul king getting stabbed is he i know he's very important but i'm like what does that mean now does that mean death? Is he hurt? What What are the ripple effects of that? I don't know yet, but I feel like I am mostly just overwhelmed <laughs> by the, the last part of the episode and everything that's to come. And of course, also not feeling great. So if there are things that I missed or that I am not wrapping my brain around, I apologize for that. I will get more into everything that's going on with episodes coming up, hopefully when I'm a little bit more here and present. But I hope you enjoyed watching that along with me. You can click this playlist to go and see my reactions to the previous episodes, or you can subscribe to this next time I post a bleach reaction. I will see you in the next video. Bye!